came to deliver something to their generation. You have to understand that you value and you matter. And, and so many times we go to places where they don't celebrate us. They just tolerate us. You're not tired of being tolerated. You can't tell when you're around people who just put up with you. Because I can't. And God has given us a spirit of discernment. Listen, don't let people use you as a wastebasket to dump their trash. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And feed your faith and starve your doubt. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. I'm not going to hold you long. I promise you. Father, thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your holy word. Open the eyes of our understanding and we may know what is the hope of your calling. What's the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe? We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Now hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, and all the citizens of this great kingdom, shout amen. 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 See, y'all didn't make y'all not no I say shout amen. Amen. Oh, now see, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes we don't hear. We hear what the Bible says. We need to hear with the ear of the spirit. It means a cool. See, this is your natural ear, but you have an ear of the spirit. And when God speaks to us, we need to hear with the ear of the spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Your assignment today is Psalms 100. I'm giving you an assignment. I'm going to ask you about it on next Sunday. But Psalms 100. I need you to go and read that. Uh, that's going to be your assignment since I don't have the time I need. I'm not going to go to that, that verse. Uh, but I do want you to understand that God is taking us to the next level. And God never moves us before we're ready. Just like he'll never build this church to the place where he wants to build it until the foundation is in place. Because if you build a church and the foundation is not settled and stable, it's going to tumble or it's going to come down. So God is putting people in place. He's making you a foundation. So please, don't be a post. Because a post don't hold anything up. We need pillars in this church. Because pillars hold up the structure. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. The title of this message is Praise is Our Weapon of Warfare. Amen. Praise is Our Weapon of Warfare. Who can tell me the title of last week's message? Terry, first hand. The power of worship. The power of worship. Amen. Come on, get your fire out. I enjoy giving me five hours a week. I think we're raising the ten. Y'all ain't good students. <laughs> Amen. 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 The power of worship. Today's praise is our weapon of warfare. Amen. I'm going to go to the scripture in 2 Corinthians. 10, I'm going to read it real fast, and then I'm going to go to the verse that I want to talk about. Amen? So you don't have to go to 2 Corinthians if you don't want, but go to 2 Chronicles 20. I'm going to 2 Corinthians 10. And I'm going to read the fourth verse. This is 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means these wars that we're dealing with are not fleshly, okay? I know sometimes you run into a situation with people and you have this altercation with a person, but there's a spirit behind the person. And so you got to recognize that it's not a physical fight. This is spiritual warfare. When people have an attitude with you or they rub you wrong, it's because it's a spirit behind the person. Mm. See, our problem is we can't recognize who we're fighting with. Right. We got to recognize the battle and who we're dealing with. Too many times people yeah. come into church and, and, and they may be deranged or, or have a bad spirit and they cut up. Yep. And you know what happens? The people put them out the church. Yes. Don't put the man out the church demon out the man. Yes. We gotta understand who we are in Christ. The weapons of our warfare are not come. 
but mighty to God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. How many times you talk to people and they have a different philosophy and it contradicts the word of God? That's the warfare of the spirit. But you even got to deal with that precisionly. You got to be able to deal with that without severing the relationship. Amen. Too many times we'll get in an argument, we'll fall out. Right quick. Because we don't agree. Yep. And then I just say you're full of the devil. Yep. When God says, no, I want you to be skillful <laughs> enough That's to be right. able to persuade them right. Right. that this is the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. I don't say the truth to make you free. Because to make you free, you don't have to do anything to get free. But the truth that will set you free means you need to take a principle that will unlock a promise and break that thing off your life. The truth will set you free. Because this Bible is full of keys. And those keys will unlock promises. The problem with us is we don't know the keys. That's like a lot of you got a whole bunch of keys on your ring. You don't even know what they're for. I'm, I'm telling you, I got a bunch of keys. <laughs> At one time, I knew they were fucked. Yeah. But now, I don't. Yeah. And let me tell you, they caused a problem because when I put them in my ignition, the, the mechanic told me yeah. the weight of the keys are putting pressure on your ignition switch and eventually right. going to put it out. Right. It's just like that in your spirit. We got all these keys and don't know what they for. Mm. Running around and, and you quoting all kinds of scriptures and you don't know what they for. Right. Mm. And you don't know how to apply. Mm. And so that's, how, that's why it's not working in your life. Wow. And we always talk about our God and this and that and the other. Where is that in your life? That's what your neighbor's saying. You always think about your God with your grass ain't cut. Your trash ain't out. That's how your neighbor look at you. You run to church every Sunday. But his trash can or trash all over my problem. That's the truth anyway. Yeah. But the weapons of our warfare are not come. Bringing on every thought to Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. My God. So you can't check nobody else. Don't go sweeping by my door till you clean by your own door. I'm trying to take the motor out of my mind till you get the beam out your own eye. See, too many times we won't fix somebody else, but we can't even fix ourselves. That's what she just said. She carrying everybody's burden. And she said, well, I won't bother you with mine. Well, yeah, you need to bother you with yours and leave theirs for them. Praise God. Who made you a carrier? Any. You know, I like what God told her because that's what God told me about forgiveness. He said, don't expect me to thank you for forgiving somebody. That's your responsibility to forgive. Praise God. Forgiveness is the character of God. Who are you to say who you're going to forgive and who you're not going to forgive? Cheeky. Let's go to Second Chronicles real fast. I know we don't have a lot of time, but I want you to see something. And, and just for, for record, Acts 16.25 says that Paul and Silas was in prison. They were locked up, and they began to sing praises. The Bible said they prayed and they sang. They praised and they sang and they praised. So, so that means... Singing is one thing and praising is something else. Oh, yeah, absolutely. See, we can sing a bunch of songs and then we'll get to the place where we start praising. See, when you start praising, there's, there's no limit to what you do. People start shouting and hollering, breaking out, running, because praise is manifested in all kinds of forms. Come on, yes. Some of us never into the praise mm. because we're still bound, mm -hmm. because the mood hadn't shifted yet. Right. But listen, praise is to heal her. It means to shift the atmosphere. Yes. You might come in here heavy, weighed down with your situation, your marriage, your problem, your job, whatever it is. I promise you this, if you move into praise, everything will shift because when you change your focus off your situation and tell your God, everything changes. Yes. Amen. That's why the devil bound you up and make you think about that problem all day. You come from work with the problem. You go home with the problem. Bring the problem 
to the church. That's okay if you brought it here, but don't leave with it. Put it at the altar. Let God have it. He said, bring your birds. Lay them at the altar. Second Chronicles. When you get it, say amen. Amen. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. This is what it reads. It says, it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle Jehoshaphat. Some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazan Tamar, which is in Judea. Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. A spirit of fear is always attached to an evil report. Mm. No. I say a spirit of fear is always attached to an evil report. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You might have had an evil report this week. Somebody told you something was going on, your health, your problem with your mortgage, your car note, they come and get that car. That's an evil report. Fear always is attached to that. And if you don't know the God of faith, if you're not in faith, you're going to fear. It's okay to fear, as long as you know what to do with the fear. See, Jehoshaphat feared as well. But listen at this, it says, Jehoshaphat feared, but he set himself to seek the Lord. See, he didn't, he didn't fear and, and call for somebody else's help. He knew who to call. I, I don't care what you face today, you got to know who to call. It says, he sought the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. I remember me and my wife were going through something. We had a bad report, and we called a fast. And all the children, everybody was fasting, even the dog. I wouldn't feed nobody. <laughs> <laughs> my wife said, you ain't going to feed the dog. I said, no, we're fasting. You <laughs> may not know it, but he's going he gonna to get a revelation. <laughs> Let me tell you something. See, my dog, I'm be honest with you, my dog know about fasting now. Because we fast, he know we ain't eating. <laughs> he used to knock on the door. My dog's small enough, he knock on the door with his paw like that. My wife said, what is that? I said, that Daisy knocking on the door. <laughs> See, now, when Daisy is sick, we give a communion. Praise God. That's right. Amen. I promise she was dying. And my wife said, oh, Lord. She took two steps and kept falling. I said, Lord, have mercy. I ain't never seen it like this. I said, the Bible said, a righteous man take care of his beast. Yeah, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> I ain't do all I can do. My wife said, we better give a communion. We gave Daisy communion. And Daisy bounced back. <laughs> Praise God. Now, this, if communion could bounce back Daisy, yeah. just think what it do you. Right. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Praise God. And Daisy still with us today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you know, I could have been a man of fear and said, man, just go ahead on burial, you know. Because she was learning like to die. Every two steps, she was falling down. Like, Lord, I don't know if she ate something bad or what. But God revived her. And he'll revive us as well. Listen to this. Judah gathered together in acts of the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of the Judah, Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new courts and said, O Lord our God, you're not God in heaven, and do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to stand before you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to your descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? So he began to remind God of who he was. Verse 12 says, And you have given us to inherit. Our God will not you judge them, for we have no power against this great multitude. Sometimes we face situations where it's out of our control. There's nothing that we could do of ourselves. See, God loves that situation. He loves to find you in a situation where your back's against the wall and you don't know what you're going to do. The Bible said his eyes run to and fro throughout the earth looking for someone who he can show off of. You got to be in faith. You got to be able to stand. Look, this situation is here so God could be glorified. See, the Red Sea was in front of the nation of Israel and Egypt, Egypt was behind them. God set that up. God hardened the Pharaoh's heart because he wanted to put them in a situation where they had to trust God. What was going to happen? The Red Sea in front of them, the Egyptians behind them. Impossible situation. God is the God 
of impossibilities. Yeah. There's nothing that he can't do. Come on, let him know. That's why he parted the Red Sea and let the nation of Israel cross on dry land. Some of y'all can't, man, I can't see how that could happen. Yeah. And it never will yeah. in your life. Yeah, you because you can't see. Because if you can't see it before you see it, you ain't never going to see it. Yes. You got to see it with the eyes of faith. Mm -hmm. There's nothing too hard for God. Is there anything he can't do? Nope. Is his hand too short? Nope. Is his ears too heavy? Nope. Well, then that means he can do anything. Nope. Praise God. Can he pay your mom? Yes. Can he pay your car? Yes. Not only could he pay your car, though, he'd give you a brand new car. Come on, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Be I to mean, un according to your faith. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. I'm looking at Devin. Devin is, amen. <laughs> but let me tell you, I remember Devin told me she needed a car. Praise God. He used to use this testimony. And so I said, well, praise God. Let's pray for God to give us a car. So we prayed. She said, my brother bad. She said, God going to move. Amen. So we went down to the dealership. They ran all the paperwork. The guy came back and said, you've been approved. Glory to God. And look at Devin telling me. I must have known because I don't know I'm a Peter. <laughs> I see you found it was. I see you just like Peter. Yes. He prayed for God to show up. Then God showed up in the water. He was scared of the, the water. He scared of the storm. Now he's scared of the deliverance. <laughs> but thank God my daughter has grown. Amen. Spiritually. Amen. She has grown up to be a spiritual giant. And I'm proud of her. Yes. But that's where she was at that time. But see, we have to grow in grace. And knowledge of the truth. You can't sit under the word and not grow. You, you can't sit under the word and not grow. All you got to do is take the information, allow it to become revelation. If it's revelation, it becomes transfiguration. It'll transform your life. It goes from revelation to transformation to manifestation. Now I'm walking in it. Ain't nobody can tell me God can't heal because he healed me. Amen. Nobody can tell me he can't deliver because he delivered me. Amen. You caught me too late. Amen. Praise God. I've experienced the goodness of God. Yes. I know what he'll do. Hmm. Nobody can tell Greg that God ain't a miracle worker. He's a living miracle. Yes. Glory to God. I can't tell his testimony better than him. But I can help him with it. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Jehoshaphat. Say, Lord, I know you're going to do something about this situation. So I want you to jump over for, for time's for time sake. Let's go over to verse 21. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, who should praise the beauty of his holiness. And they went out before the army and they were saying. Tierra said, the Lord said, I got to say it. I can't pray in my mind. Right. You know what? You got to speak it because your brain needs to know your decision. Right. So many times we don't want to wow. speak it out of our mouth. Wow. So we wow. say it in our minds. That ain't good enough. You need to say it because your brain needs to know your decision. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Jehoshaphat, notice they put the praisers up front. Yeah, that's right. Now wait a minute, we're about to go to war. But he put the praises up front. I, I'm gonna finish right here. Listen, it says he put the praises up front that they might praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and they were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise God. His mercy is new every morning. Now, when they began to sing, say sing, sing. And, praise. and praise, that's two different things. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to sing praises, but they sang and they praise. Mm -hmm. See, when we sing in our songs, is one thing, but when the praise or the spirit of praise get on us, Greg might shout, glory to God. And he's all by himself now. He became a solo. Somebody else say, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Praise God. David be up here doing the dance all by himself. <laughs> dance like David. David praise God. Yeah. Somebody else in the back spinning around like the top. Glory right. to God. Praise God. Praise God. They sang and they praised. The Lord 
The Lord, the Lord set ambushments. See, when you begin to praise, I don't care what you're facing, I don't care your battle. When you begin to praise, hmm. and you show it from a deep place of worship, mm -hmm. God set ambushments. Mm -hmm. See, the battle it's was the Lord. Right. We're not the army of God. We're the citizens of God. Yeah. The angels are the army. Now you want to be a home man? Go ahead on. Get your head not clean up. <laughs> your job is to pray. This is what he said. He said the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Yeah. Well, but they had to participate in the warfare. You know what their job was? To praise and to worship. It's not your job to worry and to be full of anxiety. Your job is to praise and to worship. Your job is to rest. And believe God and say, listen, we're going to worship. We're going to wait while we worship. Woo. Praise God. And God is going to show up and show up. I just told you God is looking for somebody Come on. who he can show off on. Sure. I don't know about you, but I tell him all the time. Sure. Here I am, Lord. Show off. <laughs> show off on me. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to show off on me. Amen. I know everybody be mad. Thank you, y'all. I don't think I'm nobody, but I, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Yeah. I mean, I'm one decision from a crackhead. Praise God. You know why? Because one situation could take you off course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I am what I am by the grace of God. Yeah. Like I said, I don't have time to finish.